I think we're going. I think so. <laughs> there we go. They've changed it on me since the last time I went live, so I'm not sure. But welcome back, everybody. Silas here. Uh, we're just going to hang out for a minute and let the live get going, let a few people log on. Hanging out here out at the junkyard, let me know if you can hear me. I've got my mic on. Guess I can get on my other phone and see if I can hear myself. Yep, there. I've got my mic on. I can hear myself. <laughs> Guess I can get on my other phone and see if I can hear myself. A little bit of a delay, so it's kind of weird. I meant to go live a little bit ago, but uh, or a minute ago, but I guess I changed it to where the default setting is they want it to be vertical, but obviously I don't want to do that. I want to have it like this. And I had to go in and figure out how to change it. But we're just going to hang out for a minute. If you're watching this video afterwards, after it's live, uh, after the live is over, I mean, you can just go ahead and skip forward a minute or two. We'll just hang out for a minute here. I can't work today, and when I open the door here in just a minute, you'll see why. <laughs> we'll hang out. Actually, we already have quite a few people on here, so I guess we can go ahead and get started. Main purpose of this video I'm having today is uh, some stuff has changed, things are different. I have some content already recorded that I'll, that'll, that'll be editing and posting, but uh, I want to give you guys an update of what's going to be going on this year. But the reason why I'm doing this today is this right here. Let me open up the door. Whew. It's a little bit snowy out there, and actually it's not that bad right here, but out there further, it's a little bit under snow go back in here for now. I'm here in the building. If you guys watch my videos, you guys know that he was moving out of here. He has completely moved out of here and I've already started filling it up with all my junk. I've got a bunch of carts that I'm going to be bringing in here that are on wheels, tables and carts and things like that. That way I can put all of my tools and everything on rollers. That way I can roll it around as I need it. Welcome everybody that's just now tuning in. I have heat in here. I don't have it very high. I have about 50 degrees. I don't need no thousand dollar heating bill for a shop that I don't hardly use. And then in other news, I got this truck here. Check this out. Look at this here. I have never cleaned this truck on the inside since I bought this truck. This is the cleanest it's ever been. <laughs> it was dirty when I got it and I just started using it, but I had it detailed on the inside. Looking pretty good. I'm getting ready to sell this truck. So I'm getting it all cleaned up, got it all cleaned out. I hate to let it go, but I found a mouse nest in the glove box the other day here a couple weeks ago. And I just thought, you know what? It's just gonna fall apart sitting out here at the junkyard. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it cleaned up. I, I drive it once every three months anymore. So don't really need it. I have another truck I wanna park in here. So I don't want this taking up all the space. But we got enough people on, so we're going to go, out, go ahead and go out here. The sun is bright. Takes my eyes a second to adjust. I hurt my foot earlier, <laughs> being dumb, trying to shovel the sidewalk at home and everything. I had about uh, 14 inches, I think, in my driveway at home that I had to shovel. So that was no fun. But anyway, I hurt my foot, so I'm kind of hobbling and limping right now. Trying to read the comments is hard in this bright sunlight. We've got glasses in there somewhere. I don't know what the official snowfall, snowfall if I can even talk, was, but it rained. I know we got multiple inches of rain yesterday all morning long. It poured down rain. And then later in the day, the rain turned into a frozen mix, and then it turned into snow. So I don't know if we got three or four inches of rain. And like I say, in my driveway, I had 14 inches. It's kind of hard to walk out here. I'm sinking almost up to my knees. This may have been a bad idea. <laughs> Whew. If I can even walk with a messed up foot and deep snow. It was pretty wild. A lot of people around here lost power. But we lost power for about 45 seconds at home. Other than that, the lights just kind of flickered all night. 
We've had a lot of snow this year. This is the, the second major snow we've had of this winter. Plus we've had a few small ones, plus we've had a ton of rain. Uh, yeah, we are due for more bad weather, James. Uh, this Friday it's supposed to snow again, but not, not as much snow, but the temperature is supposed to drop down to like a negative 15, negative 20 wind chill. So, uh, yeah. This has been a cold, wet winter. Last year, it's on my Facebook memories, I was working on a farm cleanup where I cut up that road grader and it was like 60, 65 degrees in January. Or not that warm, it was 60 degrees was the high that day in January. So it's a little bit different. I think it's about 28 degrees out here right now. Turn this around so you can see the cars. A little bit of snow, just it's starting to melt off a little bit because it's right up there close to the freezing point. But you can kind of see on that car right there, there's probably probably about 10 inches to 10 to 12 inches on the roof. So I'm guessing we got somewhere between 10 and 14 inches of snow last night. It was really windy, so areas that are out in the open aren't that deep of snow. But like behind the shop, there was a snow drift over two feet deep, so. Go out here, like this drift right here, this is well over a foot deep right here in front of me. But right over there, there's no snow. It's pretty neat out here though. Lots of snow. If you haven't been keeping up with my most recent videos, all the bundles are gone out of here. Yeah, we got a boatload of rain yesterday. It started about, oh, three, four o'clock in the morning and it rained till probably 10 o'clock in the morning. And I mean, it rained. This is the most snow we've gotten in years. We've had several record snowfalls. Actually, now that I think about it, this is the third major snow we've had because we had one by Thanksgiving too. We got like nine inches in Thanksgiving. I guess we'll go this way. It's hard walking in this stuff. I almost need snowshoes. That's a first. <laughs> I just love walking around the junkyard when everything's covered in snow. Now, as always, if you see something you're interested in, you can always email me. My email's in the description, but uh, I doubt you'll be able to see anything that good anyway today. It's all covered in snow. Turn this back around so I can talk to you guys. This is a workout. I have to walk sideways with my one foot because I hurt my toes. I'm walking sideways through the snow. It's wearing me out. <laughs> but I want to get back here. But if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them. I'm just hanging out today. I can't do nothing else, so I figured I'd give you guys a chance to have a Q&A or whatever you want to make it. Look at this. These old trucks. It's supposed to get up into the mid 30s tomorrow and the next day, so a lot of this will melt off. But then it's going to drop down really cold over the weekend, and then next week's supposed to get back up in the 30s again. Yeah, last winter, I think we got one snow all winter long. It was always bone dry, and the winter before that, I was out working on a farm cleanup and in late December after Christmas and I was sweating wearing just a shirt. It was so warm. So this is welcome. This is the most snow I've had since I bought this property. When I first bought this property, like a week after I signed the paperwork, we got a bunch of snow. But uh, back in 2020, or 20, yeah, 2020. And I came out here and went exploring. That was before there was any cars out here. But other than that, it's always been dry out here. Yeah, I like the snow. It is kind of a pain. I can't get nothing done. I was supposed to be crushing cars today and loading trucks, but all that fell through because I shut all the highways down. 
up until a couple hours ago, you couldn't get in or out of Hutch on the highways. They had everything shut down. I haven't seen any tracks out here. I've been looking for that. And other than the tracks I'm making right now, I haven't seen any. So I think everything's kind of hiding out. I'm definitely glad for a wet year though. I put a plug in for the second channel. It's called More Adventures Made From Scratch. If you like watching me do stuff other than Junkyard, and I even do some stuff at the Junkyard on that channel. So like Junkyard Cabin and that sort of stuff. So go subscribe over there. But uh, I just recorded a video there. I went out mushroom hunting, found a boatload of mushrooms. Not morels, obviously, but other mushrooms. All the moisture we've been having, they're growing like crazy. I'm thankful for all this moisture. We're still in a drought, believe it or not, but this isn't nearly enough to get us out of a drought, but we're working in the right direction. <laughs> yeah, I've got two videos coming out on the second channel pretty soon. We took a trip to California for Christmas, so I got a bunch of cool stuff there. Got some cool shots of that, and then uh, I have a mushroom hunt. Whew! This snow I'm walking through right now is up to my boots, or up to my knees almost. Not so much right here, but walking through over there. Some of these drifts are pretty deep. I haven't got my plaque yet. I'm still waiting on that, my 100,000 plaque. I don't know when I'll get that. They say it takes a while. But I'm waiting until I get it before I make a video, a special video for it. We kind of got lucky because like I said, it rained like crazy yesterday and all the trees were wet and then it dropped way below freezing in the evening. But uh, most of the moisture fell off of the trees before it got below freezing. So we didn't lose a whole lot of limbs. Lost a few driving around town. I saw a few limbs here and there. It's kind of crazy. This morning as I was driving around, my great big diesel truck, four wheel drive, it doesn't care about snow, it just goes. But it was amazing how many people were stuck in the middle of the roads. There was tow trucks everywhere, pulling people out. They can't even get the snow plows down a lot of the roads because they're so full of abandoned cars. Walk over here, I see dry ground. Uh, we went to a Sacramento area mainly, but we went to San Francisco and we went through the, the Central Valley and we went to uh, Las Vegas and we went to the Grand Canyon and we went and saw a bunch of stuff. We were gone for a week and a half. Look at this, dry grass in the midst of all this snow. Huh. Uh, yeah, Alice, they, uh, they emailed me and said that it'll, they're working on processing it and they'll let me know when it ships, but I haven't got the, it's shipped yet, email. Yeah, yeah, we were actually out of town for the Thanksgiving snow. Let's turn this around. That's when we, uh, I made my Branson video on the second channel. We were in Branson when all that happened, so by the time we got back, it was mostly gone already. Whew. Find some place out of the sun for a second so I can see this. Man, this snow was over the top of my boots down here and just went down my boot. Ooh, that's cold. But yeah, when it's this snowy out, it's raining snow out of the trees on me. When it's this snowy out, if you just have a little tiny front wheel drive car, unless you absolutely have to get out, you really shouldn't get out. Give it, you know, 12 hours or so till they get most of the streets cleared out. <laughs> but uh, anyway, if you feel like asking a question or whatever, go ahead and ask it. I'll keep an eye on the chat over here. Do a cold start, no, I don't feel like starting nothing today. I don't feel like working on nothing. I'll start my truck and turn the heater on if I get too cold, but beyond that, no cold starts. But uh, anyway, I wanna update you guys on what's going on uh, on this channel here and the second channel. 
is you guys know I was doing a two videos a day or two videos a week. I'm sorry, I can't even think. I'm tired and worn out from walking through all this snow. <laughs> but I was doing two videos a week and that's just a boatload of work to do that. So I'm gonna be going to one video a week more than likely. I was gonna release a video tomorrow, but because I'm doing this live today, I'll probably wait till Sunday to release the, the big video. And then I'll probably do one short video a week as well on this channel. And then on my second channel, I hope to do a video every other week I've got some really cool uh, ideas of making some cool campers out of stuff I have out here and doing some camping videos and camping at the junkyard videos and uh, like survival videos, quote unquote, that sort of stuff like that. I saw somebody ask a question. I bet it's warm in the school bus with all the windows. I bet it is. I should have went in there and started up the, uh, the wood burning stove. Looks like I missed several questions here. I'm reading through these now. Yeah, get that big truck plow truck going. <laughs> it actually is supposed to run. I haven't had a chance to mess with it yet, but uh, I've got some content ideas for that yet. I'm not sure which white Ford C-Series you're talking about, George, but I, I probably still have it. I haven't sold any of those lately. Yeah, I found a boatload of mushrooms. It's been so moist. That's probably the most oyster they were oyster mushrooms is what they were that's probably the most oysters i've found at once in one spot like that and probably ever i've got a few old imperials out here not out here but the other yard i guess but they're all buried way in the back i've had them forever fix my collar i found this thing this is a cat brand I think and uh, it's insulated on the inside if you guys can see super warm it's a flannel but it's like a long jacket it goes down long I love this thing it's like I say it's 27 28 degrees out here and I'm actually starting to sweat a little bit how close let me see what that says how close from mr. or crazy D and mr. good players to my location uh, crazy D I'm not sure where he's out of, but Mr. Good Pliers, he's about an hour away from me. They both travel to a lot of the auctions. I don't do auctions full time like that. I just, every now and then I go to an auction. I'm trying to block that sun so it's not shining in the camera, but I'm walking this direction here. Let me turn this around. There we go. Oh, the people buying all the noses and stuff like that, it's a mix of both commercial and residential. Some people are as resellers, some people make furniture for places, things like that. I don't put cars upside down when I crush them anymore. It used to be a requirement, but I haven't done that for quite a while. Yeah, the second channel is more adventures made from scratch. Same thing, I just added more. So just remember, if you like adventures made from scratch, Maybe you want some more adventures made from scratch. And that's where I'll be doing the more adventurous type stuff. It won't be strictly junkyard on there. I do have a school bus over here that I turned into a cabin. Some of that content will be on there. And then I've got that truck bed right there. I won't tell you what I'm doing with it, but I, I got started on it and I ran out of time. But I'm doing something pretty cool with that for the second channel. Spring, believe it or not, is on the way. It'll be here. <laughs> It'll be here one of these days, and I'm going to be doing a bunch of videos for the second channel then. Uh, no plans for a vacation anytime soon. Like I was saying earlier, I just got back from California. I got back on the uh, Christmas, or not Christmas, on New Year's Eve, actually. So I'm vacationed out for a little while. I'll probably, we we're talking about going to Costa Rica again this year sometime, but that'll be later in the year. How far behind are the current videos? I haven't even been trying to stay in order. So some of my videos are only a week old. Some of my videos are two or three months old. <laughs> I kind of release them however I feel like releasing. I don't like to release the same type of a, video back to back. So if I do a crushing video, even if I recorded two crushing videos side by side, I won't release them together. Uh, the logic for crushing the cars upside down 
was they didn't want hoods and windshields and stuff like that to blow off. But I already had a bunch of bundles crushed, and so I asked them to let go of that requirement, and so they did. Bobcats, yeah. I had a bobcat on my trail camera the other day, actually. I don't even see any coyote tracks out here today. Street scrappers. I don't buy low quantity stuff. I mean, if somebody has a pickup load, I don't want it. It's not that I, I don't want it, it's just I don't have time for it. There's not a lot of uh, profit to be made. We'll go this way. No, I'm nowhere near the 65 Dodge panel. You wouldn't be able to see it today anyway. This old wagon looks pretty cool in the snow. Oh, that's something else I was gonna tell you guys about and I forgot is uh, now that I have that shop open, I'm gonna be taking a lot of vehicles like this, take them up there by the shop, put good tires on them, clean them up a little bit and then get them advertised for sale. Of course, they're gonna be more expensive now, but putting all that effort into them. Whew. Okay, I need a break from walking through the snow. Let's get in here. I haven't even, well, I came in here and cooked lunch one day. But other than that, I haven't been in here much lately. There we go. Whew. Oh yeah, it is warm in here. Okay. Whew. I must be out of shape or something. Walking through that snow is wearing me out. I thought about starting the stove up, but it's already so warm in here. I don't really need to do that, so. Well, it sure is nice out here though. Just looking around. Will I ever do a will it run video? I might. I don't know, that's not really what this channel is all about. So I've thought about it and I've tried in the past. I'm just not very good at it. But I'm not big on will it runs. I feel like every car channel under the sun does will it runs. And so it's not very unique content. I feel like what I do is fairly unique of going out here at the junkyard and, and the, basically you guys know what I do. Not to say I won't do a will it run. I thought about doing a will it run on that snowplow truck, but, and I probably will at some point in time. I don't know if that'll be the entire video though. That'll probably just be like the first two or three minutes of the video, but maybe not, we'll see. I don't allow a whole lot of other people to come out here and film. Just because obviously this is my content that I make off of. And so if everybody else started filming it too, it wouldn't be, uh, it'd get oversaturated. Uh, no, I got rid of most of my Schwinn bikes. I used to have a bunch of Schwins. I had some pretty cool ones. I've had them all the way from the, the old wooden rim days all the way up to modern, but right before Schwinn sold out and became a overseas company but none left right now. A first gen Ford Courier. Uh, I've had a bunch of them. I've crushed a bunch of them. <laughs> yeah, the Cosmosphere, that's here in Hutch. I go there every now and then. If you live here, you can get in for free. And so I go there every now and then, go to the IMAX Dome, but not that often. <laughs> Uh, you'd be surprised on a, a will it run video how much time you have to put into it. I mean, if it starts easy, but that's no big deal. But if it doesn't start easy, you got to put a bunch of time into it. And I don't enjoy working on vehicles. I don't even work on my own vehicles. If it breaks down, I just take it to the mechanic and say, you fix it. Uh, searching for, the problem with searching for treasure videos is since I don't fake those videos, it has to be legit. I have to have fresh cars. And, I mean, if I'm buying cars by weight, there's usually nothing good in them. I did find some stuff in a car the other day. I take that back. It was kind of a spur-of-the-moment deal, and I just I happened to find it. Uh, that'll be in a video coming up. But for the most part, I can't just make treasure hunt videos from scratch because I have to wait until we go to an impound auction or something like that. So I can't just make 
treasure hunt videos all the time. I wish I could, and I could if I wanted to fake them all the time, but <laughs> that, that gets old after a while. You don't, you don't want to do that. You don't want to build your channel on lies because if it ever falls apart, then you just lose everything. So I hope that makes sense. Going through the comments here. Uh, with my skills with the loader, will I flipping coins or feats of balance? No, that, I try not to get too crazy with the equipment, even though I'm good at running it, just because that stuff's very expensive. Uh, the problem with goats, somebody said something about getting goats for the brush, is they love to climb on cars. You know, goats love to climb. And I know some people that had goats in their salvage yard, and they tore up every car on the property. And so goats really aren't a good thing to have in salvage yards. A uh, number of farm sales. Now there's boatloads of farm sales. There's a farm sale going on later this week, actually. I'm not going to it. Like I said, I don't have time to go to every auction. Plus, if you go to too many auctions, the algorithm decides that you're an auction channel, and I don't want to get into that. I've really, really tried to avoid doing one type of video over and over again. That way the algorithm keeps a variety out there. Uh, good, price for, good price for a used crusher. Just depends on what it is, how old it is, how many hours are on it. Uh, the crusher like I use all the time, the one that's kind of a faded green color, uh, that one there is probably worth a hundred to hundred and twenty thousand dollars. It's kind of burnt. The other crusher that I actually had out here earlier in the year crushing cars, that's probably a hundred and fifty, hundred and sixty thousand. A new one's about two hundred and twenty-five, two hundred and fifty. Uh, farm cleanups, no big farm cleanups. Um, the farm cleanup where I drug that old 41 Ford coupe out of the trees and that GMC semi, uh, the guy that has the excavator that hauls me a lot of junk that I work with a lot, he's actually going out there to clean that place up here pretty soon. If our schedules work out, I might go out there for a day and film him cleaning that up, all the iron that's out there. And then I have a couple places that have a few old cars in the trees that I'll be doing at some point. But other than that, none coming up right now. How far is my house from work? Uh, it depends on where I'm working that day. Uh, sometimes I'm working far away, but for me to get from my house to here is about 15 minutes in good weather. Today it took about 20. The problem with collaborating with other YouTubers for me personally is I'm not close to any physical, I'm not physically close to that many YouTubers that would be into that. I'm close to like Mr. Good Players. He's not that far away, but he doesn't do that type of stuff. Uh, I am going to be doing a collab with a guy this spring on a camper, actually, for the second channel. Hopefully, anyway. We were going to do it last spring, and it didn't work out, but I need to talk to him and, and uh, see if we can work it out for this spring. <laughs> yeah, Daniel, the algorithm is crazy. If I just ignore the algorithm and do whatever I want to do, everything just falls apart. You... As much as I hate it, you have to somewhat play the game. You can't just ignore it completely. Now, that being said, I do basically do whatever I want to do. Every now and then I have sponsors and then I'm bound by contracts, but that's, you know, six or seven times a year. Yeah, I've been doing a little bit of eBay here and there. Not a whole lot, but a little bit here and there. Uh, my favorite YouTuber to watch... Oh, who's my favorite? I like uh, High Adventure Videos. I like him. He does like fishing and camping videos. They're pretty good. Uh, Ace Videos. Believe it or not, I don't watch any car content. None whatsoever. I don't watch any of it. I never have other than Mr. Good Players. And then maybe one or two videos here or there. Like I've seen a couple of Whistling Diesel videos. But for the most part, I only watch fishing videos. <laughs> Believe it or not. I actually wasn't that far from Cowboy when I went and took my Texas trip, and I was hoping to meet up with them. I was just really, really crunched on time, and I wanted to go check out that salvage yard that had thousands of cars, and it just I couldn't do both, and so I ended up doing that instead, and so I'm thinking about take, making a Texas trip again this year, and if I do, I'm going to try to meet up with Cowboy for a day. <laughs> Even if he's working, I'll just go out wherever he's working if he'll let me and I <laughs> film whatever he's crushing. Yeah, there's a handful of people that are close to me, but they all work on cars. And 
you guys already know me. You guys already know if you watch my channel for any length of time, you're going to see some cars get destroyed that probably, I don't know if I would want to say they shouldn't get destroyed, but they're going to get destroyed whether they should or not. And a lot of guys don't want that attached to their name because there's a stigma to that and you get a lot of hate when you do that. <laughs> I've gotten used to it. I've been doing it for three years now. And uh, who's that other guy? He's the one of the bigger YouTubers from Kansas. I've never seen his videos, but I know he's from not too far away. Uh, Weston Champlin. But I doubt he'd be interested in destroying old cars. <laughs> no, I'm not so... I've actually had a lot of people try to buy this bus, but it's not for sale. Like, this bus will probably not leave this spot. And unless I ever sell the property some future day, at which point in time I might try to sell it. But Okay, guys. Let's stop arguing about presidents. <laughs> Let's go back out in the snow. I got rested up a little bit. I don't know what I did to my foot, but it is hurting. I'm going to let you guys in on a little behind the scenes type stuff. Everybody says, well, such and such YouTuber really likes that type of car and you've got a bunch. You should get a hold of them. But you would be shocked at how many offers those people get on a continuous basis for cars like they like on their channel. And so they're usually very picky about what they buy. So just because such and such YouTuber collects a certain, like I won't mention any names because I don't want to start drama and throw shade, but there's a certain YouTuber, he's quite a ways away from here, but he collects a certain type of truck. And I had that certain type of truck and everybody said to contact him. I got a hold of him, showed him, and then he was very rude with me, basically told me I'm insane and that it was just a big ordeal. And so uh, that was probably the last time I contacted a YouTuber about buying something from me. Go this way so the sun isn't glaring. <laughs> Let's go turn this around. A lot of snow on these cars. I'm curious how much weight there is on each of these cars in snow. I try to keep my prices fairly fair. I mean, I'm not gonna give stuff away. I'm here to make money. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a capitalist through and through, but I don't try to gouge people either. But I understand shipping is just crazy. <laughs> I have that, that two-door, uh, Fairmont or whatever it is, and a bunch of people sent that to Sleeper Dude, but I never heard from him, so I guess he's not interested. I did have another YouTuber interested in coming and looking at those Mercedes, but uh, we set up a time, a day, and everything, and he never contacted me again, never showed up, so I guess he's not that interested. I do have, if the snow doesn't ruin everything, I do have another YouTuber that's not that far away coming out here to buy a car from me, so I said all that, and then I broke the rule right there because he's buying one, but he and I both have a mutual friend that we deal with a lot and so I've never actually talked to him but the the middle guy we both deal with all the time so they're both coming here I'm supposed to Thursday we'll see if it happens Whew, it is muddy right here and I'm trying to walk and I'm about to fall Yeah, I haven't, I don't know what Mr. Good Players is up to right now. I bought a motorcycle from him here not too long ago. But I'm not sure what he's up to this winter. He has that property he's working on cleaning it up. And I know he's been really busy with that.
I didn't do much for New Year. <laughs> we got back from California New Year's Eve. It was late. My wife and I, we stayed up till midnight and said, Happy New Year, and then we went to bed. <laughs> so we were pretty boring this year. Okay, guys, let's stop talking politics. You guys know my channel. I don't do politics. Ooh, that wind's cold. Let's turn around and go this way. I don't talk politics on here for a reason. Just scrap everything. You know, sometimes I think about that. I was going to go over there, but that wind's whipping across that field, my neighbor's field. It's too cold for that. Junkyard cats. Actually, I don't right now. The junkyard guard cat that was out here, the uh, renters were taking care of it, feeding it and everything, so they went ahead and took it to their new building. Thank you, KevTech. I'll spend that on some hand warmers. <laughs> My fingers are frozen. I should have wore gloves. Actually, I might have gloves in the truck. Let's go back up there. How come your dad isn't on here? He's not big on the camera. Even when I'm recording a video and he's just with me, a lot of times he tries to stay out of the camera. Unless it's like on a time lapse or something like that. Oh, here's some rabbit tracks. Right here. So, that's the first animal tracks that I've seen. Check these out. You guys haven't seen these yet. Got in a... 41, I think, or 46, something like that, Chevy car here. Of course, you can't see nothing. Pretty cool car. Then I got this little Jeep mail truck in. That's pretty neat. But that Jeep mail truck there is what's really neat, how it's a, the extended wheelbase. That's pretty cool there. I guess this was a kit you could buy. It, it's on a S10 four-wheel drive chassis with a V6. I guess that was a kit you could buy back in the day. Pretty neat. And then this Chevy here, I did some trading on the square body. See if I can find the door handle. Whew. I don't know where it's at. Oh, there is no door handle. That's why I can't find it. I'm not gonna say what type of truck that the Ute Oh, I just hit my foot. Ouch. Oh, that was good. Something hiding under the snow. What is that? A bumper. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm not going to start drama. Pretty cool car. Pretty well complete other than transmission. Pretty rough, been sitting out in the field forever, but still kind of neat. Now the door won't close. Oh well, I'm not gonna fight with it. The worst I ever did slipping on something in the snow was at the other yard and I was crushing and I had the, the bucket off of a backhoe. And uh, I was walking across the snow. There's a piece of plexiglass. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for the five pounds. I appreciate that. But uh, I was walking across the snow and <laughs> I slipped on that plexiglass and I fell backwards and I hit my back on the teeth of that bucket. And uh, that didn't feel good. Luckily, I was wearing my overalls and my coat, multiple layers, so it wasn't that bad, but it still hurt. Yes, I do crush cars. I think you know that. <laughs> What's in the mobile home? Trash. That's one of the big things on the bucket list for this year is I want to get these trailer houses gone, or at least most of them. Actually, let's talk about that. That trailer house over here. If I can walk through here and make sure I don't trip on anything else. Sorry, I'm just trying to walk through here. Oh, that's water there. go okay I made it now I know there's a whole bunch of stuff in here so we won't go any further okay 
Sorry guys, I had a message on my phone. I was trying to read it. But we're gonna take this trailer house here out and I wanna clean all this stuff out. I might take that tree out. I haven't decided yet. But at least some of the stuff I'm gonna take out of here and I'm gonna to try to open this area up good. And that way, as I work on vehicles, like not work, work on them, but like get tires on them, get them cleaned up, that sort of stuff. I can line them up right here and get them advertised for sale. And then uh, over here, I'm not gonna walk through over there again. You can see where I was sinking in water. But over here in front of the loader, behind the shop, in between that shop and this shop, I'm gonna lay out sheets of tin and I'm gonna put all my noses that I cut off lined up over there. That way they're ready to go if anybody wants to buy them. <laughs> uh, do I ever have stuff walk away? Not really. I'm not open to the public per se, so people can't just come in here and grab stuff. I have had it happen in the past, and that's part of why I'm not open to the public anymore. Yeah, I got a bunch of noses, stuff like that, all through here that are pretty cool. I can get them all lined up over there. Uh, the fuel cans are going away soon. Fuel tanks, whatever you want to call them. They just got to get a place to put those. And then I'll have this area all open. I thought about tearing that building out. It's kind of, it's made out of aircraft pallets and an old trailer house. So <laughs> it's not that good quality of a building. If I take it out, I got a concrete pad right there. I can put something else on. Probably one of those portable pre-built buildings. But yeah, I get this area cleaned up right here. And then I can line up all my noses and stuff right in this area. Got a bunch of junk back here. I don't even know what's back here. Can't see nothing really today. A bunch of trash, a bunch of junk. I got these two trailer houses here. I thought about tearing them out, but I thought, you know, they're not really in the way. So that's not a number one priority right now. Maybe someday in the future. No, there's not enough hours in the day, especially this time of year. Getting dark at 5 and 5.30. My least favorite car is to pull the battery out of. Whew, I would have to say probably like uh, Chrysler products out of the late 90s, early 2000s. Because they're up inside the fender wheel behind the tire. They're not easy or fun to get off. Go in the building, warm my fingers up a little bit. There we go. Let's see here. Have to do a little bit of moderator work real quick. Get rid of a few comments. There's this really cool feature on YouTube that a lot of people don't know about, but you can actually hide comments and when you do that, or hide users. And so then the person can still comment and they just never realize that their comments aren't going through. <laughs> and the thing is, you never know if you're the one or not. Yeah, the mobile homes, I'm definitely going to make content out of tearing those down. Ooh, it's a lot warmer in here. I have the heater set on just 50 degrees, but already I can feel my fingers again. <laughs> Worst thing about scrapping electric cars is there's no scrap value, minimal scrap value, and the cost to get rid of the batteries is astronomical. So, unless things change, which, I mean, obviously, by the time we get cars, they're usually 15 to 20 years old, 10, 15, 20 years old. So we don't really get EVs that often. But when that day comes, unless there's some sort of value to those batteries, we're probably looking at having to charge to accept cars instead of paying for them. Which when I was a kid, we charged to take cars or we only gave a dollar or two for them. <laughs> is my Dodge, yeah, my Dodge is still running. I had a guy come detail it for me. He did a terrible job on it. <laughs> I'm kidding. The guy's in the comments that cleaned it for me, so just giving him a hard time. I thought about putting a wood burning stove in this building. I mean, it's set up, I could easily do it. The problem is, is that I guess you can't get insurance if you do that, or insurance is really, really iffy. So I'll probably just keep the whole natural gas heaters 
There's actually two of them. There's this home unit and there's the actual shop unit. The guy I used to rent the shop to when I first bought it put this in here and it didn't heat it very good so he found that on Marketplace or Craigslist or something and put it in here and between the two of them it actually keeps the shop nice and warm. It's just you're going to pay a fortune to do it. <laughs> Uh, your wife thinks you have a scrapyard? <laughs> yeah, I, I try not to take too much home. Sometimes I have to take stuff home on my trailer, but I try to keep my house and the business totally separate. I'm a Dodge guy, but I bought a Chevy. <laughs> Believe it or not, I was actually gonna buy a Ford, but I couldn't find a Ford when I was looking for a truck that was at MSRP. And so I, I got a good deal on that Chevy, and so I bought it, and I'm really glad I did. That's been a great truck. Only issue I've had is, uh, the def system went out on it right before I went to California, but they had it fixed the next day for free, so not that big of a deal, really. A waste oil heater, same thing as a wood burning furnace. It, it really it, it doesn't void your insurance, it just makes insurance much more complicated and difficult and expensive. Yeah, diesel heater. I actually have some propane heaters, portable ones that I can set up in here. But like I say, it's it's warm in here. It's 28, 29, whatever it is outside, and it's 50 degrees, and the furnace isn't on right now. It just kicks off and on when it needs to. So it'll this building will stay heated pretty good. What's the plan after the farm cleanups are done? We don't do that many farm cleanups. Probably 90% of what we get is just buying from people around town locally that have one car that broke down in their driveway or whatever they're selling for scrap. On my channel, I know most of what I do on here is stuff outside of that. I don't film that type of stuff that often, just because to me it gets really boring really fast. But in reality, that's where most of our stuff comes from. And they make more cars now than they ever did before, and so <laughs> there's no shortage of scrap cars. A shortage of farm cleanups, there may be that in the future. I don't know. We'll see. And a lot of times, farm cleanups these days, you still have a lot of farm cleanups out here, but somebody will call and say, I've got some old cars out in the tree row. Uh, what do you give me for them? We'll go out and look at them, and it's cars that are out of the, the late 80s, early 90s, late 90s even. I went and got a car the other day. A guy said he had an old Pontiac in the tree row. Said we could have it for 100 bucks if we'd get it out of his tree row. And so we rushed out there. And it was like a 93 Pontiac 6000 or whatever it was. <laughs> Talk about a disappointment. A claw or a magnet? I'd say probably the claw. I don't deal in little tiny stuff and prepared iron and things like that. A claw would be really fun though. A front clip for a 51 F1. I don't ever get F pickups that often. Pickups usually are fairly valuable to where I can't afford to buy them. I mean, every now and then I get them. But most of what I buy is big farm trucks because I can make money selling the sheet metal and then I can scrap the big heavy frames for money as well. <laughs> Opening a pick apart, uh, no, I, I, have, I have thoughts on that and none of them are good. <laughs> I'll put it that way. I have zero desire to run a pick apart. Who cuts my hair? I just got a haircut earlier. I went in there, and that's why I'm freezing cold right now is because my head is all shaved. Not shaved, but you know what I mean. It's always bad getting a haircut in the wintertime. Yeah, I know, Carlos. I saw your truck there after I left. I went to Ace Hardware and got a snow shovel, and when I came back by, your truck was there. <laughs> Yeah, that's also another thing with pickup parts is people come in there to buy whatever part and they take everything around that part too. And we used to sell parts, but it was always just, it was more of a hassle than it was money. Unless you're dealing in really late model parts, if you're dealing in like, you know, five years or even 10 years and less cars, old and less cars, then you can make money with uh, selling parts. But for the type of stuff we deal in, there's no real money in selling parts. It's, it's a whole lot better just to crush it.
Yeah, the trailer house, I'm not sure when I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna wait till it's drier for sure, because when you rip those apart, it makes a mess, and I don't wanna deal with that in the snow and mud. So we'll wait on that a little bit. My go-to order at McDonald's. I don't go to McDonald's that often. If I do, I usually just get, you know, just a cheeseburger or something small. If I eat too much there, I'll get sick. It's not good food. It's emergency food only. <laughs> when you're in the middle of nowhere and nowhere else to eat, you're starving. I'm not dropping the rude YouTuber's name, man. I'm not that type of person. Uh, 67 Impala SS's, none right now. I've had them before. Uh, the restaurant I tell everybody to visit in Hutch is Roy's Barbecue. It's not far from here, actually. It's just over and down a little bit. They got plenty of parking, even if you have a trailer on where you picked up an old car. It's really good. Uh, any recent breakdowns? Not recently. It just my dev system on my Chevy, but like I say, that was fixed the next day. Uh, difference between my shop and my dad's shop is my dad's shop, I could fit this inside of my dad's shop. Uh, the old Mercedes, I still have all of those. I sold one of those Mercedes, and uh, that's it. I think I sold a few parts off of another one, and that's it. So I've had, I don't, that, I think those Mercedes are cursed. <laughs> I don't actually believe in that, but I've had so many emails and messages on those things and nobody showed up. Uh, and all I got was extremely angry people telling me that I can't crush those because they're worth a fortune. I mean, never like any video I've ever done before. It was unreal how many people messaged me and told me I'm crazy for talking about crushing those cars, but yet nobody bought anything. So probably this spring I'll cut up a bunch of them and crush them. So that'll be that. I'm sure that video will get some love. Any find, find any deer sheds on my property? No, not on my property. I found them elsewhere before, but not actually here on my property. That's always a bonus when I'm out mushroom hunting and I find deer sheds. Favorite brand of excavator? I like our link belt. It's been good for us. That's the only one I've ever driven. Uh, new merch designs, I actually have a couple designs in my head, I just don't have time to put them on the computer, and I'm not a graphic designer, I'd have to have somebody else do it, and then I have to put them on everything, and I want to do it, I just don't have time to do it all. <laughs> and that's one reason why I've scaled down to just one video a week on the main channel, is that way I have more time to do other things. <laughs> actually, talk about a doodle bug, it wasn't a flathead, because it was an international engine, overhead valve, but uh, my next video that comes out probably on Sunday, there was, it was an auction video actually talking about auctions and there was a really cool doodle bug there. It's a Chevy with an international engine. So you guys will want to stay tuned for that. Pretty cool video. <laughs> My kids are two, five and eight. Old VWs, not very often anymore. There are certain types of cars that have enough of a collector following that even somebody that has it sitting out in the field knows that it's worth something and so they try to get full retail and I can't pay full retail for stuff when I sell it so if there's no money to be made I'm not going to buy it so I don't buy VWs that often. Every now and then I'll get a Super Beetle because those don't have a whole lot of value. Have I been to the salt mine? Yeah I've been to the salt mine. It's a pretty cool place. I mean once you've seen it you've seen it but it's good to go there once. Have I ever seen valve covers used as art? Uh, yeah, I've seen them every now and then. Not as common as you would think. <laughs> yeah, this 20 acres, Kevin, this is, it's nice having this. It was a spur of the moment deal. I had, I think maybe, I mean, hardly anything in the bank and maybe a few hundred bucks <laughs> when this property came up for sale. And I begged the bank. I said, I need this property. Is there, what can we do? And so I had to tie my house to this property as collateral, but I got it bought. Didn't know what I'd do with it at the time, but now it's half full of cars already, so it didn't take me long. Uh, do I have any precious metals? Not, not really. I have some silver coins and some old broken gold jewelry, but that's it.
Yeah, Alaska, the problem with finding cars there is they never had a big population to start with, and so what cars they did have are rusty or gone. It's not like here where every farmer, the car would break down, they'd go park it in the field. Uh, yeah, Miles, I was just talking about that earlier. A waste oil furnace would be really cool, other than it makes insurance really complicated. For me to get full insurance for an affordable price the way I want it, I have to keep the natural gas heater in here. Because I checked into that, because, I mean, I get enough. They sell those dual fuel, I think they're called, something like that, where you can burn oil or wood, depending on what you have available. And I was going to buy one of those, but just it messed everything up for my insurance. Yeah, Winger, a lot of junkyards are like that. If it's more than 15, 20 years old, they just crush it as it comes in, no matter what it is. And it's just a time thing. You have to pick and choose. There's just not enough time in the day to save everything. So me, if it's 15 years, 20 years old, 25, however old and newer, I crush it as it comes in and save the older stuff. How do you find what I have for sale? I, I have some stuff on eBay. Uh, it's Adventures Made From Scratch on eBay if you want to look up my username. But other than that, if you see it in the video, shoot me an email and uh, we can talk about it from there. I don't have an actual website with stuff for sale. Have I ever broken a crusher? I've never broken a crusher. I burned a crusher, but <laughs> that never broken one. 71 and up Dodge vans. I think I have some out of the 90s, but they're just junk. What state am I in? I am in Kansas. That's where I'm based out of. Right, pretty much right in the middle of Kansas. Uh, do I have to drain all the oils? Yeah, we got to drain the oil, transmission fluid, that sort of stuff. Gasoline, diesel, whatever. Right now, what I do with all the oil, everybody always asks this question. I have a guy that has a shop with a waste oil burner in it, and so I just give all my oil to him and he burns it in there. He's got a concrete block shop with no insulation, so it burns a ton of oil to keep it heated. So he gets free heat and I get rid of my oil for free. Back when oil was worth big money, uh, I used to sell it, but those days are gone. How do I find auctions? Uh, usually just people tell me, like, hey, you going to this auction? I'm like, oh, I didn't know about that auction. I guess I am now. Um, am I going to do a special on hitting 100,000? Yes, as soon as I get my plaque, I'm going to do that, but I have to wait until then. I don't know when that's going to be, hopefully within two or three weeks. I've never crushed an all-electric vehicle. I have crushed hybrids before. You have to pull the batteries out. Highly flammable, very dangerous to crush those, so you pull those out. And right now, fortunately, most uh, hybrids and EVs have a core value on the batteries, and so that's good. I know a lot of your older obsolete batteries that aren't lead, like a lot of old airplanes would run a, not nickel cadium, it's something else, but they would run a different type of battery in them that's real lightweight, and those cost a fortune to get rid of. So hopefully EVs don't ever get to that point, but uh, they probably will. Sorry, I'm trying to read all the comments and talk at the same time. Uh, are scrap prices up? Yeah, they're actually up pretty good. They're talking about dropping a little bit this month, but not a whole lot. I'm going to keep shipping. The gas that I drain, I just give it away or whatever. Sometimes if we have extra gas, we have vehicles sometimes that run, but they're like a blown transmission or whatever. We'll just dump gas in them and fire them up and let them run all day. <laughs> or like if we're out working someplace and we don't have a shop with heat, you turn the heater on in a car like that and just let it run all day and you can get in there in the heater anytime or air condition. I used to have a Ford Taurus, absolute piece of junk, but it had ice cold air condition. And so one summer, that was my, that was my air condition office. Yeah, I've heard of uh, solar heat collectors, but I don't run the heater. I have the heater on today because I'm here, but I want to turn the heater off when I leave, and I probably won't turn it back on for two weeks or three weeks or who knows how long. So it wouldn't really be worth the investment. Yeah, I've got tornado insurance, theft insurance on what's in the building. And uh, outside, it's hard to get theft insurance. That's You just got to get security cameras. That's the only insurance you can get out there. And then I've got fire coverage, that sort of stuff. 
The biggest challenge in running a scrapyard is the government regulation. The guys that scrap out one or two cars in their backyard every now and then, they don't have any clue all the regulation and permits and stuff you have to have. And the government doesn't enforce the stuff on small time junkers, so they don't know about that stuff. But there's a ton of red tape you have to go through. All behind the scenes stuff. Any Scion parts? No, I, I've crushed those before, but none right now. I don't have a list available of what I have for sale. I just, it's so time consuming to maintain a list like that. Uh, if you see a, video, a vehicle in my video that you're interested in, just send me an email and either send me the timestamp of where it was at in what video or send me a screenshot of it so I know what you're talking about. Because I've had a lot of people say, I'm interested in that Chevy truck that was in your video that I watched yesterday, but the video they watched was six months old. <laughs> so I always try to tell me exactly what video it was in and what the timestamp was or just send me a picture of it. My email is in the description. Uh, do I think the crusher would crush a, a cyber truck? Oh, absolutely. It wouldn't even be a challenge at all. But I don't have the money. I'm not that big of a YouTuber to do that sort of stuff. We'll let Whistle and Diesel tear one of those up. I don't watch his videos that often, but if he does get a cyber truck and tears it up, I'll have to watch that one. That'd be fun. Going through the comments, seeing if I missed anything. I thought about going back outside, but it's so nice in here, I kind of don't want to go back outside. I do have a crushing video coming up pretty soon. I know I haven't done crushing videos very often uh, here lately, and I used to do them all the time, but I kind of got away from that. But uh, I do have, uh, I think, two crushing videos recorded and on my computer. I just got to edit them. And I do all my own recording, my own editing, my own posting and I post on YouTube, and then I take the video on YouTube, and I shorten it down a little bit, and I put that same video on Facebook, and then I take that video, and I change the format to vertical, break it into multiple parts, and put that on TikTok, and then I make shorts and reels out of it for Instagram and everything else, and so I spend a boatload of time on just one video. I don't wanna hire an editor just because I don't know, I kind of like doing it all myself. How many hours do I work in a day? I usually work, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten hours out of the junkyard, and then I'll spend maybe an hour or two a day doing eBay stuff. And when I was doing two videos a week of having to post them on YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, everything, I was spending, you know, two, three, four hours a day. Sometimes I'd go to bed at two, three in the morning because of editing. So that's why I'm cutting back to one. It's much more manageable. Yeah, if you watch my videos on YouTube, that's the full content. That's where you get everything. If you watch them on Facebook, it's usually a much shorter video. I've cut a lot of stuff out. And if you watch it on TikTok, it's even shorter yet. So if you want the full experience, you got to stay here on YouTube. YouTube is, I mean, I know Google has its issues, but YouTube is by far the, the easiest to work with out of all the big companies, social media companies. One video a day, yeah, that'd be something. I don't know how those guys did the daily vlogs back when those were popular. I have no clue. That would be brutal. That would be murder. I would not even want to try that. You know, back when I first started on YouTube, I would record everything on my, uh, either my GoPro or my phone, and then I would edit it on my phone, the one I'm recording on right now, actually, and so I... Then I could do four videos a week, but they were like 10, 15 minute videos. I've kind of gotten into doing 20, 30, 40 minute videos, and so there's just no way. Yeah, I put four tire, I'm allowed four or five tires per car, whether they're on it or in it. So if the car has tires on it, I'm not supposed to put any in it. 
But if I have, you know, five empty cars with no tires at all on them or in them, sometimes I'll shove a few tires in a car that still has them. As long as it averages out to where I'm not overloading them with tires, they don't care. They've tried to care, they've tried to complain, but there's enough competition in this area with other shredders to where you send your stuff somewhere else for a month and they notice you're gone and then they'll come right back to you. Okay, we'll take tires, you know. <laughs> back in the day, we shipped everything to a company uh, called Chaparral Steel. It was down in Midlothian, Texas, and everything went there. Thousands of cars went there. But they sold out to a, a company overseas and now that's changed and you have to switch companies all the time. The company we're with right now has been pretty good to us here lately anyway. We've had issues in the past, but right now things are going good, so. That uh, black trailer, the great big 36 foot that I just got, that is mine. I just bought that. Well, I didn't buy that myself. My dad and I, we went 50-50 on that. My last trailer, my little 20 foot tan colored trailer, I bought that and I've used it for the business, for my dad's business more than I've used it for my business. So on this big trailer, I told my dad, I said, let's just split it. I said, I already know I'm gonna use it for you and me. So that's what we did. Uh, Randall says to remind the viewers to check their subscriptions because he got unsubscribed. Yeah, always, always take time to go through your subscriptions just in general and make sure you're still subscribed and you have notifications turned on because if you don't, sometimes you just won't even know. And I've done this before where I accidentally unsubscribed from somebody as I watched one of their videos and when I went to swipe away, I hit unsubscribe. And then three weeks later, I was like, why haven't they posted any videos lately? And I checked and <laughs> sure enough, they had. I just, it was an accident. Speaking of notifications, for some reason, eBay quit sending me notifications on this phone. Now, I just got a notification on this phone that my, somebody made an offer and it's about to expire and it's a good offer. I don't want to lose it. I don't know what's up with that. I've been trying to get this phone to work better and with notifications, I've uninstalled it, reinstalled it. I don't know. I guess maybe I'm getting too old to understand technology. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't feel like I was there yet, but. Let's see here. I better do this right now before I forget. You're seeing what goes on behind the scenes right now. There we go. Okay, got that taken care of. I haven't used this phone. I've actually been recording on my GoPro again. I started out on my channel recording on a GoPro. The problem is it had audio issues and I put a media mod on it and a mic on it, but it still, it was just clunky and wonky and I didn't like it. But I found these little foam covers that go over the top of my GoPro and they're awesome. They take all the wind noise out and they make it sound good. And so I just, it's so easy to grab a GoPro and go. It's waterproof. And I, I just, I've been recording on that more than I have this camera for a while. No, there's no update. It's been like this now for like four months. If I would take 30 minutes to sit down and Google it, I could probably figure it out. But how old is my dad? Uh, let's see here. Um, he's almost 67. He's 66 right now. His birthday's here in a couple months. I had to think about that. I had to do the math. Scariest moment I've had in the junkyard? Whew. When I fell off the top of that semi, that was pretty scary. I thought I was going to die that day. And then when I burned the crusher, that was pretty scary. Uh, does YouTube provide enough income where it's worth the time? Uh, yes and no. Sometimes if you're getting enough views, but like in January, the ad revenue drops through the floor. I mean, it's a fraction of what it is in November and December. So that's another reason why I went to one video a week is when you figure it out by the hour, you don't make hardly anything for your time. Snow falling off the roof scared me. <laughs> Yeah, for YouTube ad revenue, some more behind the scenes stuff for anybody that cares is uh, in November and December leading up to Black Friday and Cyber Monday and Christmas and New Year's and all that, advertisers compete with each other and they bid on advertisement spots. And so ad revenue shoots through the roof for those two months. And then January, it just goes because they all just, they spent all their money. Now they're done. <laughs> Uh, 
Yeah, uh, God, I, uh, I try to stay away from politics. We've been in this business for years. We've had Democrat governors. We've had Republican governors. And government regulation is a pain no matter who's in office. So <laughs> it, doesn't, it, it doesn't discriminate. Yeah, junkyard treasure hunt. I do plan on doing one here pretty soon. Obviously, I'm going to have to wait till the snow is gone. I'm not doing it in this weather. But I do have one I'm going to be recording here fairly soon. And whenever I record it, I'll make that a priority to get it edited and released as fast as I record it. I'll skip it ahead in the line a little bit. But it's probably still going to be two or three weeks before that happens. So stay tuned. i got a really cool auction video coming out Sunday. I am very excited for the mushrooms to start growing again. I'm really looking forward to that. I love mushroom hunting. That's probably one of my favorite things to do ever. And uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. If we keep the moisture up all winter and into the spring, it's going to be a bumper crop year. Uh, what do I do if I find illegal stuff in the cars? Uh, I, I don't find nothing. We'll just put it that way. And those cars just get crushed. <laughs> One time we found some illegal stuff and thought we'd do the good deed and we called it in and they came out with the yellow tape and shut us down for a day. And so ever since then, I've never found nothing. Those cars just get crushed. Uh, do I hunt animals? Uh, no, I, I like to go fishing if that counts, but... I don't mind hunting. I've gone hunting before. I'm not against it or nothing. It's just more time that I don't have. I've got to pick and choose. And I like fishing and mushroom hunting better, so that's what I do. <clears throat> Where's my water at? I thought I had a water bottle in here somewhere, but I don't know where I laid it. Oh, here it is on my back bumper. Am I going to make some videos on the kayak this year if there's enough water? Last year, there wasn't enough water to put the kayak out anywhere. Everything was dried up. There we go. Yeah, I did a metal detector video out here once. The problem is, is obviously being a junkyard, and it was a junkyard before I got it. It was empty when I got it, but it had been a junkyard off, off and on since the 60s or 50s. So the place is clear full of metal. And I found a few cool things. I found an old coin and uh, an REO horn button, and I forget what else, but it was a lot of trash, uh, trash finds, so. What would I do if I found a gold bar in a car? That'd be pretty cool. I don't know what I'd do. I don't know how I would react to that. I got pretty excited when I found a $100 bill. I guess it would depend. If I, found, if I bought the car at like an impound auction or something like that, I'd probably just keep it and be excited about it. But if I bought the car from somebody and, and I, I felt like it was something that they didn't mean to leave in the car, I'd probably go give it back to them. I mean, I could make a video about finding it, and that video would probably do good enough to make some money anyway, so it wouldn't hurt that bad to give it back to him. I could do a lost gold bar return to owner. That'd be kind of cool, actually. But I don't know who would leave a gold bar in a car. I'm based out of Kansas. Have I ever been to Indiana? I have not been to Indiana. I've never been to the Northeast anywhere. I've been north, I've been south, I've been west, I've been east but I've never been northeast. Yeah, I found a lot of wallets in cars, and I found money in them a few times. Most of the time, they're empty. I crushed a car the other day that was clear full of purses and wallets, and I guess the people had been breaking into storage units and breaking into cars and stealing stuff, and uh, they got caught, and their car got impounded, but they had taken all the valuable stuff out already, so all the stuff got left in the car, and I crushed it. No, when you're in Kansas, you're Midwest because you're in the middle. Indiana's northeast from Kansas. <laughs> Pretty much all the salt, the salt lakes, I've never been anywhere around those. I said salt lake. Somebody said salt lake on here, and I, the Great Lakes. I have been to the salt lake. I don't know why I said that. I'm getting tired. I found gold rings in cars. I never found a gold bar, but I have found gold rings, silver rings. Have I ever seen a or had a car battery explode? Yes, that's how the crusher burned. Car battery was inside a car hidden, 
and it exploded. Thank you, Elijah, says, say my name, brother. So, Elijah Nelson, thank you. Have I ever melted metal? I have melted metal. I used to refine silver, believe it or not. Electrical contacts, I had a nitric acid and the whole setup. I used to do that back before YouTube, just as a hobby. And uh, I found out it was actually cheaper, unless you were doing it in large, massive quantities, it was actually cheaper just to buy silver bars that are already done. So <laughs> that's what I did for a while. And then I, I, I got really, I timed it pretty good. I, I bought a boatload of silver when it was around 12 or $14 an ounce. I say a boatload, it wasn't that much, but at the time it was probably about $2,000 worth. I don't know what it's worth now. Ever find a gun? Yeah, I found several guns in cars before. I found a gun right here in the driveway one time. I made a video about it and the YouTube algorithm didn't like it. And so nobody saw that video. That was one of my worst videos of the year. Uh, the weirdest noises I've heard at the junkyard. Um, one time it was mating season for skunks and I had a male skunk. I walked up on a female skunk and then a male skunk walked out of the cars and he actually chased me. I had to run away from him and he chased me quite a ways making a weird noise. It's the only time I've ever had to run from an animal. Uh, do I get gold out of computers when they come in? I don't get computers that often, but I do pull out the motherboards and the, the uh, little memory cards and all that stuff out of them. Uh, Puddin, I'll just go ahead and tell you guys now, Puddin's actually supposed to be here Thursday. I mentioned earlier in the video that someone was supposed to be here. Uh, he's supposed to be here Thursday to get a car. Maybe. He's going to look at a car and make some content of walking around the yard. I've never talked to him before, but like I was saying earlier, he and I have a mutual friend that we both deal with all the time. So that guy connected all the dots. Yeah, I had a bunch of old uh, government computers one time that had some really high grade uh, gold contacts in them that I saved, pretty good stuff. Uh, cars, if we buy cars from individuals off the street, most of the time they still have the converters unless they've been like abandoned in the alley or something like that. If they've been abandoned in the alley and maybe somebody needed a fix and so they stole the cat off of it or something like that. But usually they still have cats. If we buy them by weight, usually the cats are gone. Ever had a call, car fall out of a stack and flip over? Uh, coming up soon, I have a video where I was loading a semi-trailer and I went to put something up on top and it went <coughs> it was, it, it wasn't close to me, it wasn't a dangerous moment, so it wasn't that scary of a moment, but it was like a oh my type of moment. But that'll be in a video coming up here pretty soon. Have you ever had a car trip the alarm and start beating? Yeah, I've had that happen before. Wrecked cars especially. Uh, what about Cowboy? I've I talk to Cowboy online every now and then. Uh, but uh, someday I'd like to meet up with him. It's just the only time I was in Texas, it just didn't work out. But if I go back again, I'll try to make it work out. Uh, do I have to have titles? Uh, it's supposed to have titles. However, if the person has like paperwork in their name, like the registration or whatever, and it's all clear, and I'm making the check, I, we pay for everything with a company check, and so if I'm making the check out to them, and it's their name on the registration with the VIN number and all that, I'm not like a hardcore stickler. Oh, nope, if you don't have the physical title, I won't do it. Because people lose titles, and I understand that. And it takes like a month and a half to get a new one. And the city gives you, you know, seven days to get the car out of your yard, what do you do? Uh, do I have to pay to have the fluids taken away? No. Fortunately, I do not. I, I give them all away. Once upon a time, we could sell them, but I've never had to actually pay to get rid of them.
Have I ever found an ugo horn? I found ugo horns. I've never found a train horn. I found sirens before. Do I think the kids will ever take over the junkyard? I don't know. That's up to them. How do I use the bathroom in the middle of nowhere? I don't know. How does a bear do it in the woods? Have you ever, ever separated the catalytic converter? Uh, no. No, you don't want to. If, it's, if you're just junking one or two catalytic converters, you don't want to cut them open and take the stuff out because the money is in the number on the converter. That's how you identify what it's worth. If you take the material out and it's just loose material, actually, just a second. This was laying in the back of my truck. And if you have just the loose material out of a converter like that, I have to assume, if you bring me a box of this, I have to assume that this came out of aftermarkets because I don't have a way of testing the metal content. And so I'm going to give you little or nothing for it. So leave it in the canister. It's very expensive and very difficult to actually refine the platinum, palladium, and rhodium out of this stuff. Yeah, Kansas is easy to get a replacement title. It's just time consuming. You know, and it doesn't cost that much. I think it's cost 10 bucks. So it's not expensive. It's just time consuming. I don't have to turn the titles in because we're a dealer. And so they just, there's never been an issue in all the years of us crushing cars. So they don't, they don't force us to turn titles or paperwork in on them. We do have to report everything to the state, but that's a different, different ball of wax. Yeah, the aftermarket cats right now I'm paying like five bucks on. And whereas converters like this one, just a second, let me find it here. It's one of these. I think this one here, I'm pretty sure I don't, I don't have my thing to check the numbers with me right now, but I think that's like 100, 150 bucks, something like that. So they're all different prices. But yeah, you converters, if you don't, if you aren't able to look up the numbers, it's hard to say what they're worth because you can have two cars, identical cars, and the converters be worth different amounts. It's crazy. Uh, have I ever found an ID in someone's car and been able to return it? Yes, I have. I found, we got a car at an impound auction and there was a wallet full of, uh, it wasn't, it didn't have much money, just a little bit of money, but it had an ID and a bunch of pictures of their daughter in it. And so I did some research, found out that person was struggling with addiction and they were in jail. And so I was able to get a hold of their mother and their mother came and got it. And so hopefully, hopefully all that situation worked out. I never heard anymore, so I don't know. But I did return it. I'm going back through some of the older comments. $185 every two years for our vehicle tax. For my Chevy that I drive, it costs me, uh, I just, I, I get a tag, I have to tag it here in about a month or so. I think it's probably going to cost me about $800 to tag that for one year. <laughs> not cheap, not fun. Yeah, converter theft is terrible. I have to record the ID of everybody that sells me converters unless they're a dealer. And uh, every once in a while, probably once every few years, somebody will bring us some stolen cats. And uh, when that happens, you just lose the cats. It's just part of doing business. I, I try to be somewhat picky about who I buy from for that reason. And I get, I get the reputation of being a person that you don't take your stolen stuff to, and so we hardly ever get it. There are several other yards within a 45, 50 minute drive of here that will buy anything and they ship it right back out the door. And uh, totally illegal, but nobody ever does nothing about it, so. I saw a comment here, are my city, are city taxes pretty bad? Uh, sales tax, I don't even know what it is, 9%, I think, something like that, give or take. Uh, property taxes are pretty high. And I was talking about $800 to tag my truck. If I was just in Wichita, which isn't that far away, it would probably only be about $600, only. <laughs> so taxes here are a little bit higher. Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to, it seems like the questions come in in, in droves. 
there won't be any, and then there'll be a, a whole bunch at once. Yeah, tagging vehicles here in Kansas is just stupid expensive. A lot of people with fleets of vehicles will tag their stuff in Oklahoma because the Oklahoma, uh, Blackwell, Oklahoma, you can tag your stuff there, and that's only like a two-hour drive, a little over two hour, two and a half hour drive from here. So you drive there once a year and tag all your stuff and save a whole, whole bunch of money. Now the nose behind me, somebody asked about that there. I just cut that off the other day. I have a guy wanting that, but he wants me to ship it to him. And uh, I don't have time to build a pallet right now, so I told him it's going to be later in the month before I get that done. But uh, a nose like that is $600, if anybody's curious. Have I ever found human remains? No, I've never found that. I found lots of animal remains, but never a human. And I'm uh, thankful for that. I know that other people here locally in town that have found bodies in their junkyard, and luckily that's never happened to us. Do I pull the license plates off most of the time unless the screws don't cooperate, if they're rusted out or they, they spin or something like that, I just leave them on there. I mean, license plates bring usually about two bucks a piece on eBay in bulk, and so it's not worth a ton of effort. I want to get a brush hog for the skid steer to mow the yard. Just those are fairly expensive. A good quality one is about $5,000, I think. And so just got to put it in the budget. I wish I could buy everything I want to buy. Maybe someday if I hit a million subscribers. <laughs> a meet and greet. Maybe someday. The problem is, is I don't even know where I'm going to be. I had no intention of making this video until about three or four hours ago. So here we are. And that's my problem with meeting people is I don't know where I'm going to be. If you drive by one of my places and you see me there, feel free to stop and say hi. I can't promise I'll be able to talk to you for very long but uh, if I'm really busy. But if you see me at an auction or something like that, don't feel bad to come up and say hi. Uh, once again, if I'm kind of short with you and I'm trying to bid and film stuff, I'm not trying to be rude, it's just I'm trying to do business, you know. A regrettable crush? I don't know that I've ever had a regrettable crush. I grew up doing this my entire life, so I'm almost 34, so almost 34 years. I get used to it. Uh, it's going through some more questions here. Uh, 20s and 30s vehicles, I don't have that many of those. And I don't, I do allow, sometimes I allow people to walk through the yard. Usually if I don't know you though, I'm going to want to walk with you. Just nothing personal, it's just, you know. And uh, if I don't have time to walk with you, I may not let, let a person in. I'm not open to the public per se. Uh, for pickup trucks, no, we don't have to do any sort of inspection, weight, smog, nothing like that. I mean, I could chop the exhaust off of my truck and run it straight open headers, pumping black smoke out on the street. Nobody will care about that, but <laughs> they're going to make you pay for it no matter what you do. That's the one good thing about Kansas is there is zero inspection unless it's out of state. And then when they do the inspection, all they do is make sure the VIN number matches the, the title. That's it. No, I've never really had a desire for a magnet. I mean, it'd be kind of handy sometimes. Back when we used to buy lots of dumpster loads of little stuff, I kind of wanted one, but I wouldn't have a use for it now. Uh, would I crush a Lambo? Yeah, I'd crush a Lambo. Wouldn't bother me. That'd be kind of fun. You lose your, your sentimental attachment to vehicles after you've been doing this long enough. You become desensitized. Uh, do I have a cat at home? No, I don't have a cat at home. Got a dog. That's it. And my plan, I have t-shirts. Uh, AMF, AMFSmerch.com. I have hats and t-shirts on there. Uh, I'm going to be updating that sometime relatively soon, though. So you can check it out now if you want to, or you can wait a month or two, and maybe it'll be some different designs.
a VW van. Uh, when I was a kid, I forget how old I was. I wasn't that old. I was probably five or six years old. There was a Volkswagen salvage yard here in town that crushed out, and we crushed a boatload of Volkswagens. And there was a bunch of split window vans and the split window van truck things, whatever they were called. I'm not a Volkswagen person. We crushed them all. But uh, now I think we have one Volkswagen van left. It's the 70s body style with the pop-up roof. Still a fairly valuable piece, but it's buried way in the back of one of the yards. Can't get it out. Unless you got a helicopter. Seventy-two Chevelles, not recently, and no rear-wheel drive Cadillacs. I have some front-wheel drive, the uh, Eldorado Cadillacs, but I don't have any rear-wheel drive ones. I crush better vehicles than the one, some of the ones that I drive sometimes. <laughs> like I say, you, you lose all attachment to vehicles. Have I ever had a Land Rover? Yeah, I've crushed a bunch of Land Rovers. <laughs> Range Rovers, Land Cruisers. I've crushed Porsches. I've crushed, you name it. I've never crushed like a Lamborghini or Ferrari or nothing like that. None of the like high-end stuff, but the middle-end stuff, Corvette, stuff like that, I've crushed all that stuff. Have I ever bought an aircraft? Yeah, I've had a handful of airplanes and gliders through the years. Uh, no, I do not have a shredder. Shredders are very expensive, very exp for a good quality shredder. And there's already a bunch of shredders in Kansas. And so there, I feel like there's too much competition for another one to start up. When I was a kid, we crushed everything. You name it. We crushed a lot of good stuff through the years. Am I going to get back to building the bus cabin? Yeah, I plan to. My next step for that is, is I got to get the seats out of it, but they have a bolt that runs through the bottom of the seat with a nut on the bottom of it, and the nut is covered in undercoating. And so it's just very time consuming and it takes two people to do it. And so I just got to wait until it's me and somebody else, somebody else have an entire day to pull the seats out. Until I do that, I really can't do much else with it. Uh, pickup tailgates, I save them if they're embossed. If they're not embossed, I don't bother saving them usually. I've saved them before, but tailgates don't rust here. And so nobody buys tailgates here unless they just happen to leave theirs down and back into a pole or something like that. And so they don't, they don't sell often enough to make them worth saving. But embossed ones, I sell those for art, whether it goes to Utah, Florida, Texas, places like that. I've got a lot of dealers around the country. Um, cutting the bottom bolts on the bus seats, you can't get to them with a cutoff wheel. I could get them with a torch pretty easy, but the problem is, is that bus is surrounded with dry grass and <laughs> makes me kind of paranoid. I'd rather put the extra effort in and do it right rather than burn the whole place down. Speaking of tailgates, my new trailer, you may have noticed. Oh, no, I didn't put that video out yet. I didn't put that video out yet, but I lost my tailgate. I ripped it off with the trailer, the new trailer, the first day I had it. <laughs> Not used to pulling a gooseneck, but uh, they can't get a tailgate from a truck. I've got insurance. It's covered, but they told me they might have a tailgate for me this spring, maybe, if I'm lucky. So we'll see what happens there. For the time being, I'm driving around with no tailgate. I've never crushed an airplane. Airplanes are usually aluminum, and so I throw those in the aluminum. Can I sell phones on eBay? I sell them for scrap. I just pull the batteries out and I put a bunch of them in a group and sell them for scrap. They've got gold and who knows what else in them. I don't know. Am I going to clear out some trees? I do have a bunch of trees way out back. Those locust trees with the great big thorns on them. Uh, they're kind of a pain tr of a tree. They're, they're just a nightmare to have. I've got a bunch of those I want to be taken out. I've listed tailgates for sale before, like out of the 90s and 2000s, but I mean, you can list them for 100 bucks and they take forever to sell in mint condition. Yeah, I've had fires out at the yard before. It's never fun. My truck is a 22 model and it's not the multi-pro tailgate, it's the plain Jane tailgate, but they can't get them. 
if they, they said if they don't have one here within a month or two, they're just going to go ahead and buy a used one. Insurance wants them to buy a new one, though. But the body shop says that they can, they can do some sort of, we can't find a new one, so we're going to buy a used one type deal. And insurance will pay for it anyway. My goals for the channel this year, I mean, I just plan on, I plan on really working a bunch for the second channel, making camping in the junkyard cabin, working on the property out here, taking trailer houses out. All of that stuff is going to be on the second channel, which if you just turned in, that's more adventures made from scratch. You're definitely going to want to subscribe to that channel because I'm going to be posting a bunch more on that channel this year than I have previously. This channel here, I'll probably, for now, I'm only going to do one video a week. I might bump it back up to two later in the year. We'll see how it goes. The problem with locust trees is you can't even burn them. If you burn them, those thorns don't always burn up and then it'll just lay there and then you drive over them and they go in your tire anyway or through your boot or whatever. You have to just haul them off. Yeah, my kids have crushed cars before with me. They've, they love the excavator more than the crusher, though. Going through some comments here. I missed a few, I think. Best thing I've ever found in a car? I don't know. It's hard to say. I mean, I found cash. I found jewelry. I found guns. I found all sorts of stuff. It's all pretty cool. I need to take my metal detector with me more often. I've only ever made one video with it. And uh, I actually know a place that I need to take it to, but if we get a bunch of rain, that place may go underwater. So I may have waited too long. We'll see what happens there. Uh, the aluminum wheels, I try to pull the wheels off the cars. If they don't cooperate, if the lug nuts are stripped out or something like that, they're not worth that much effort, and so I'll leave them on. But most of the time we pull them off, and then uh, we sell them for the scrap aluminum. We've been selling them with the tires on them. They don't bring quite as much, but I don't have time to pull all the tires. The uh, most valuable car I've ever crushed, I'd, as far as value in the moment that I crushed it, I mean, I've crushed cars when I was a kid that were probably worth huge money now. And, but uh, as far as in the moment, we crushed two brand new Hyundais one time because of insurance. And both of them just had light damage as they were unloading them but insurance made us crush them, and they actually came out with a camera and videoed us crushing them. They were like forty or $50,000 cars each. Yeah, wet ground is okay, but I'm talking like where this stuff's at that I want to go metal detect. If we get a bunch of rain, it's gonna be like three feet of water, so I'm not, a, not a <laughs> that type of uh, person, and it's, it's not clear water there either. It's, it's a lake, and it's brown water. Yeah, the storm, I was, earlier in the video, I was outside walking around. I finally gave up. It's too hard to walk through all that snow, but we got somewhere around 10 or 12 inches. Uh, yeah, I've crushed semis before. You have to cut them up to make them fit in the crusher, but I've done it. Prototype cars, I've never had, uh, like, late model prototypes. I do have that international crew cab that was kind of a prototype, but beyond that, I don't don't really have any of those. Uh, I don't like steak sauce. That's a random question, but no, I don't, have, I don't like steak sauce. Now, so you guys are gonna give me flack for this. Sometimes I like ketchup on my steak. I don't know why. I think it's because my dad always put ketchup on his steak, and so I grew up around that. So, I don't know. <laughs> but no, usually just seasoning is all I want. No sauce. How much money have I found total in cars? I wouldn't even know. I mean, I doubt it's any crazy huge amount, but I mean, probably somewhere around five or $6,000. Police impounds? Uh, yeah, we've crushed a boatload of police impounds. I work from a, so this is kind of hard to explain sometimes to people. Uh, Somebody asked, uh, you in business with your father, too. Uh, he owns the crushers and the loaders and all that stuff. Now, out here, this is my property. I own this. 
Most of the cars are mine. Some of the old cars are his too. It's kind of a mix out here. But at the other yards, most of what's there is his. And so I work for him four days a week usually. Obviously today I'm not working for him but because uh, of the snow. But uh, I work for him and then I work for myself. And I video what I do for him and I video what I do for myself. And it's, it's all mixed together. <laughs> but no, we're not actually partners or anything like that. Oh, that red Freightliner semi? No, I cut that apart, made a video about scrapping that out last winter. Have I ever helped solve a crime? No, I, well, not directly, not, not in that way. We've helped set up sting operations a couple of times on theft rings. Yeah, Silas Enterprises, the, the company Silas Enterprises belongs to my dad. And uh, he named it after me. When, when I was a kid, he was just working. And his business, his under-the-table business, got big enough to where the state noticed him. And they came in on him and they said, uh-uh, this ain't going to cut it. We need our money. And you have to have a license and you have to have a business name and on insurance and a bond and all this and that. And so he just called it Silas Salvage at the time. But back in the early 90s, Kansas was really cracking down on salvage yards. And so my dad decided he didn't want to be a salvage yard, and so he changed it to Silas Enterprises Recycling. Which is super confusing, because his name's not Silas. My name's Silas. <laughs> I don't even try to explain it to people anymore. People will come out and say, hey, what's Silas doing? And I was like, oh, he's doing whatever. I just... I don't even try to explain to him that his name is not Silas. Oh, the reason why I started a YouTube channel is I just, that sun's starting to come down and glare through that window. Let's turn it this way a little bit. There we go. But uh, I just felt like what I was doing was fairly interesting. And I, like I've said earlier, I've crushed countless thousands of really cool old cars. I've cleaned up old salvage yards, farm cleanups. I've done this my entire life and we didn't even take pictures. And so I thought, you know what, this stuff ain't going to be around forever. I probably should take a camera with me and record some of this, and maybe people on the Internet will want to watch it. So here we are. Originally, my YouTube channel was going to be a little bit of junkyard stuff, but mostly like outdoors adventure type stuff. And then the adventure at the junkyard stuff was only going to be farm cleanups, old cars, that sort of stuff. However, I just, people liked watching me crush cars and do other stuff at the junkyard too. And so this channel became a junkyard channel for better or for worse. And so that's why I made the second channel is so I can keep doing the outdoor stuff. Because you don't want to post two different genres of stuff on the same channel because it messes with the algorithm and you'll destroy your views completely. Yeah, I know it's not all about the views. Obviously, I, I do what I like to call clickbait light, where I kind of make it a little bit clickbaity, but not like over the top, just flat out lying clickbait. I don't get into all that stuff. But uh, I try not to just do things just for views. But at the same time, the views are nice. <laughs> I had my first million view video, was the, the semi-trailer video here a month or two ago. That was nice. I always wondered if I'd ever have a, a million plus view video, and there it was. I've thought about doing an element collection. That'd be kind of cool. You know, have the, the platinum and palladium and the high-end stuff, but then also having the copper and steel and aluminum. That sun keeps setting further and further and glaring more and more. <laughs> Fix that. There we go. Have I ever found any super rare? Not like super rare. I found some cool stuff, but nothing like insane or anything like that.
I found a few like five, six, seven thousand dollar vehicles on farm cleanups, but never found any, you know, hundred thousand dollar Hemi chargers in the barn, nothing like that. Old car junkie, yeah, I like that picture you drew. I still have that picture at home. Printed it out. I appreciate that. Yeah, somebody said it's all going to be done anyway, just as well me be the one to do it. That, that's what I tell people all the time. I mean, the stuff's going to get crushed. All roads lead to the junkyard. And so it might as well be me that's, that's making the money on it. Or my dad, technically. It depends on what, what the deal is. If it's like an old car that I buy, I guess I'm the one making the money. But if it's something like on a farm cleanup, usually the farm cleanups, that's my dad's business. Now, I'm the one doing all the work, and I make videos and content on doing it. But technically, that's all his stuff, if that makes sense. It's hard to explain. It's, <laughs> it's really complicated sometimes. Yeah, Kansas has been getting the snow this year. We've had bone dry winters for the last two or three winters, but with just one or two snows here and there, but this year it's been snow and rain like crazy. Yeah, I'm sure in Michigan, I know stuff up there gets a lot rustier than it does here. The problem is the shipping to get it from here to there eats up all the profit. How old am I? I am 33. I will be 34 here in about a month. I don't have any good 67 to 72 Ford trucks. Nothing nice. I mean, I've got some rusty field trucks out there that are missing parts. No, my dad is not the camera guy. I don't have a camera guy. I think one time I had a guy go with me and help me do a video. But other than that, I'm always the run. Even when I'm driving the loader and running the drone, that's me doing both at the same time which is not easy, let me tell you, because it takes three hands to drive the loader, and then it takes two hands to drive the drone. And so driving with five hands is <laughs> a unique challenge that it took me a while to learn how to do. Well, my dad, he doesn't mind the YouTube. I, I don't, he doesn't say he does anyway, so I've been doing it for three years now, so. The name, the name of my second channel is More Adventures Made From Scratch. I had somebody just ask again on that. So just remember Adventures Made From Scratch, but more of it. So More Adventures Made From Scratch. How do I run a loader? The loader, you got the string wheel knob on the string wheel. That's how you turn it out of the direction. It articulates in the middle. And then the hydraulic, of course, everything's backwards on the camera. It's on, my, this is my right hand here. So. You, have, you got the joystick here, and that's how you control the, the forks up and down and all that stuff. And then on our newer, nicer loaders, there's a button right here to go forward and reverse. But on the old loader, like I drive out here, you have, there's a shifter over here that you change the gears with. And then you have your gas pedals on the right, and on the right side of the steering column, and your brake pedals on the left side. So you have to drive two-footed. Which I'm so, I spend so many hours behind the wheel of a loader that it's second nature for me to drive two-footed. So sometimes when I'm in a vehicle, I'll find myself driving two-footed, which I don't recommend, but I have enough experience and I'm so used to it that it's not that big a deal. I pull a lot of cabs and clips off and sell them that way. Uh, all of our equipment has horns. I don't use it that often. Usually people watch out good enough. How many hours on the loader? I think this loader has around 7,000 hours. The other loader I use a lot has around nine, eight or 9,000 hours. I forget what. The crusher has around eight or 9,000 hours on it. The other crusher, the one that I had out here for a little bit, I think it's only around 5,000 hours. And then my dad has a brand new loader at one of his yards, and then he has a Fiat with like 15,000 hours on it at the other yard. And 
Now, do I see my kids getting involved in the junk business? I mean, I'll leave it up to them. Me, I didn't have a whole lot of choice. Uh, when I was real young, my parents got divorced. And so when, my dad, when it was my dad's week, I was with him. And I enjoyed it, and so I just got used to being out with him. If I wasn't in school, I was with him out drunk in cars, and it just became part of life. Whereas my kids, obviously, my wife and I are, are married, and uh, so I'll leave it up to them. They like coming with me, but at, when they get older, if they want to be involved, I'm, I'm happy to have them involved. But if they don't, I'm not going to like try to push that onto them, if that makes sense. Um, a new loader, I don't know exactly what they are because we traded one in. So I'm not sure. I just know what the final amount was. But I think a new loader is somewhere around 180000 maybe. I don't know. I could be wrong on that. 150 I don't know. I know a crusher is two twenty five. My dad's not big on being on the camera. That's why he's never in the videos. Uh, the least favorite part of my job. Uh, beyond the government regulations and the red tape that we have to go through, and then there's always the theft aspect. Uh, I'd have to say, man, I don't know. I don't know. I, I really don't. That's pretty much the only bad parts of the job. So I guess, yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> government and criminals. Yeah, no shows when people are coming to pick stuff up. That can get frustrating. But I try, I try, not always, but I try to have stuff double booked where I can, have, I can be busy doing something else. That way if the person doesn't show up, it's not like I wasted my day. Uh, my dad owns, see here, depends on how you look at it because a lot of times he'd buy a piece of land and then he'd buy the land across the street. But if you just count like that whole area as one yard, he has one, two, three, four yards. And then this is my yard out here, so we have five total. But like I say, a lot of those yards that he has, he started with one area and then added to it. And so on our property taxes, he has like 15 or 20 yards. <laughs> I would love to show what happens to a car once it leaves our place. I've tried, I've asked the Shredder if I could film, make a video of them filming cars, but they don't like cameras at the Shredder. So it's, it's really hard to convince somebody to do that. For, it's mainly EPA is what they're worried about. Or, worried, or like insurance reasons and stuff like that. That's why Whistling Diesel did a video where he shredded two squatted trucks and they didn't drain the fluids out of those things. They, they didn't drain the AC coolant, nothing, nothing. And so when they were messing with those trucks, there was AC uh, just going everywhere and there was oil all over the ground and gas. And I thought, they, they drained some of the gas at least, but I thought, how in the world are they putting this on the internet with millions of views and not getting in trouble? But that's just a side note. Do I wish I could go back in time? Oh, I'd love to save some of the cars that I crushed. But when I crushed them, you know, we were buying them for five bucks a piece. They weren't worth nothing. Yeah, you can find car shredding videos on YouTube. Just none of the shredders we deal with will let me in. So maybe someday. I mean, they make enough money off of us. They ought to, let, ought to let me in there at least once. But I'll keep trying on them. Maybe one of these days. Why not crush, I was going back through the comments, why not crush everything and start over and just, I don't know, I don't, I don't have time to crush at all. No matter what I do, I try and try and try. We could literally shut our, we did the math, and if we shut our doors and we shipped out five loads a week and we did not buy anything else, counting all my dad's cars and my cars, we could crush five loads a week and not have to, we wouldn't run out of material. I think it was, man, now I can't remember, I think it was for nine years, ten years, something like that. And that's not counting aluminum wheels or anything else like that. So we could stay plenty busy for a long time. If and when I ever hit a million subscribers, if I'm still doing the junkyard type stuff at that point in time, I would love to buy a, a, a claw as a celebration video. That would be really cool. There's no way I could justify it at this point in time. Those claws are almost half a million dollars for the nice ones.
you can buy a, a used junker for 200000 but even that's just unaffordable for me at this point in time. Maybe someday. Yeah, there's machines for that. That's what we have to do is hook them up to that, and it, it pulls the... I want to call it Freon. It's not Freon, but it pulls the stuff out. And we usually have somebody else do that for us. The portable compressors, the problem with those is, is the, the radiators are solid copper and they're big radiators, but they're in there tight to where you can't just rip them out. You have to take the things apart. And so just never have time for all that. Uh, Newton's about 30 minutes away from me. I've never crushed a vehicle on accident. One time we had just bought a whole bunch of vehicles from an impound sale and you know, they're, they're all 90s and 2000s vehicles and we had them line up in rows and a guy drives up in like a 98 Jeep that's all rusty and parks right next to all his vehicles. And so I wasn't even thinking, I just go over there and I thought it was one of the vehicles. I pick it up and start driving in the yard with it and he came running and yelling, that's my Jeep, that's my Jeep. <laughs> I still remember that, that was funny. He didn't think it was funny, but I thought it was funny. I didn't tear it up. Jeeps have kind of a low frame in them, so I didn't even bend his drive shaft or anything, so it was fine. Yeah, I have companies contact me all the time. If I wanted to do sponsored videos in every video, I could. And I could make good money doing that. I just don't like to do that many sponsors. That's why when I do a sponsored video and people leave comments like, oh, you're a sellout, I can't believe you're doing this, it's, it's kind of like, okay now. A lot of YouTubers do a sponsor in every video, and that's how they pay their bills. I only do it, you know, a few times a year, so. I try to be somewhat picky. Yeah, I thought about ripping those uh, compressors apart with the excavator. I don't know how well that would work. I guess I could try it once and see how it goes. They're bolted together pretty good. And I don't want to rip the radiators completely apart. Because it makes a... It just shreds of stuff and you lose a lot of weight when you do that because there's a lot of dirt from being, you know, 40, 50 years worth of dirt compacted in that radiator. And if you rip it apart, you lose all that. Whereas if you can just pull it out nicely, pull the steel off of it, you can sell it <laughs> with the dirt in it for clean. Make a little extra money. <laughs> yeah, I love my EcoFlows. That's one company that I'm happy to do sponsor videos for because I use my EcoFlows all the time. And like uh, I did a video for Brunt Workwear. I love my Brunt boots. I wear those every day, except for when it's snowy like this, they're not waterproof, but. Uh, yeah, we have fire department practices on our cars. There are several colleges and fire departments in the area that practice on them. Yeah, look at me still going. I'm just hanging out today. I'll probably quit here pretty soon. I think it's getting close to dinner time. Yeah, it's almost five now, central time. So I never ate lunch today, so I'll probably, probably shut it down here in a little bit. I'm just hanging out today. I didn't have a whole lot else to do because of the snow, and the rain and the mud and everything else. So, Have I ever had a helicopter land in the yard? Yes, we have. Not actually in the yard, but we have a field across the street that my dad owns from one of our yards and they practiced like a, a, a life rescue where there was a bad wreck quote unquote and I actually took a car and flipped it over upside down and smashed the roof in and then took another car and rammed it into the side of another car and did all that and uh, they actually flew a helicopter in and practiced cutting somebody out of one of the cars and loading them up and it was, it was pretty cool that was before YouTube I would have loved to film that but I've seen so much cool stuff in my life that that's kind of why I started a YouTube channel is Maybe I can share some of the cool stuff that I see. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's every, all battery powered now. They used to have to have that trailer that they pulled with them for the Jaws of Life. And now a lot of times they just hop out and do it. And they're kind of tricky sometimes. One time they took, I, I found two old car seats in the cars and I stuck them in a minivan and they put a, a, a fake uh, doll of a baby in one of them but not the other one. And then they had me smash the roof in on it. And so when the people came to cut the roof off, there's two car seats, but only one kid. 
And so they had to see, is there a kid somewhere in the car that fell out of the car seat or what? And so they really trained them how to do that. I had somebody ask, I answered this question earlier, I'll answer it again, do I watch other YouTubers? I watch zero car content. I don't want it to influence me, and I'm not really, I'm around cars all day, I'm, I'm not really interested in watching more cars when I get home. If I do watch a YouTube video, it's usually something like, uh, like fishing or camping. I like high adventure videos, ace videos, uh, ovens, Rocky Mountain bushcraft, stuff like that. Yeah, I've been thinking about doing some giveaways. It's just it's, it's hard to do giveaways anymore because of all the, the scams and spam. And I don't want people to see something on the Internet and think it's really me doing a giveaway and then click on it and wind up getting hacked or losing money or something like that. And so, like, it's not like it used to be. I'm sure there's a way of doing it. I need to do more research. I'll probably have to do it, like, on Instagram or somewhere like that. Yeah, Greg Evans is pretty cool. He's just kind of laid back, and you feel like you're just hanging out with the guy in the woods when you watch him. In a way, not, not directly, but in a way, I, I somewhat model videos like this after what he does. You're just you're out here hanging out with me out at the junkyard. We're not doing anything great or fancy, but just hanging out. If I ever did do a giveaway, I don't think I would do the type of giveaway like where go to my website and buy X amount of merch and for every $20 you spend or $10 you get one ticket or whatever. I, I realize that's how they make their money, but I have a business outside. I have a business and a job outside of YouTube, so I don't depend on YouTube and merch and stuff like that for to live on. So. I still have those magazines in that semi-trailer. You know, ever since I filmed that video two and a half years ago, however long it's been, I've never opened the doors on either of those trailers again. That's why this trailer out here, when I made that video, I said, I bought this a year ago and I'm just now going through it. And uh, people didn't believe me. They were in the comments saying, oh yeah, right. Like you bought that a year ago and you've never looked inside it. <laughs> and I was like, you don't understand just how busy I am. I have stuff that I bought many years ago that I've never looked at again since. Yeah, I still have two more semi-trailers. Two more semi-trailers that I'm going to be going through. I'm not going to do it till it warms up, though. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> what time is it now? 4.48. So I'll give it about five more minutes or so if anybody has any other questions. And if you're sticking this late in the video or if you just joined in the video, don't forget to check out my second channel, uh, More Adventures Made From Scratch. I'm really putting a plug in for that because I really want to try to focus on posting more content on there this year. I think so, it's somewhere around 10,000 subscribers right now. I'd love to bump that up to 50 or even 100,000. I didn't think I was going to hit 100,000 subs last year. It wasn't on track. But then November, I had a really good month with lots of views and lots of subscribers, and so it, it bumped it over the thing. I thought it was going to be more like spring before I hit that. That sun keeps chasing my camera. What water am I drinking? I don't know. Ozarka? It's whatever it was at the house. I don't know. My wife got it somewhere. <laughs> Does my wife work in the R2? No. 
she comes out here maybe once a year. I mean, she'll meet me, like, at the gate and pick me up for lunch, but to actually go out in the yard, she doesn't go out there that often. The car processing 101 video. I've had people ask for that video. The problem is, is that's going to be a very, very time intensive video to truly process a car down to nothing. That's going to take a boatload of time. And I just haven't had enough time to do that. I'd love to do that. If I did YouTube full time, I would definitely do that. It's just with me running a business and working for my dad and running his business and trying to edit videos for YouTube and everything all together. I just can't, I just can't do it. I was thinking about that the other day, but I thought about doing maybe some smaller scale videos in that same vein and doing that instead. Uh, did I get a YouTube button? Not yet. I, I put my application in for it, but they said they, they approved my application, but they said that it may be two or three weeks before they send it. So we'll see. The live stream will be over here in, let's see, you're probably another three or four minutes. So last chance to ask questions. I can't promise I'll answer every question you put in here, but I'm going to do my best. Why don't I wear gloves? I don't know. I just bad habit. I don't always wear gloves. The ends of my fingers are pretty hard, so from not wearing gloves all day long. I'll wear gloves in the summertime when it's really, really hot. And sometimes I'll wear gloves in the wintertime when it's really, really cold. A uh, two-door station wagon, I've got a 56 Studebaker, but it's pretty rough. That's about it right now. Yeah, I'm glad I bought this property when I did. I was reading a comment here talking about how their biggest regret was not getting a piece of property to store junk cars or just to store cars. I say junk cars. My cars are junk. I don't know what their cars were. <laughs> but uh, I'm really glad I was able to buy this property. That was a definite blessing. That was just a spur, spur of the moment. That door just opened up all at once and everything worked out. Uh, what uh, PPE do I have to use out here at the junkyard? I don't have to do nothing. This is my property. I can do whatever I want within reason, as long as it's legal in general. So if I was an employee, like at one of the other recycling yards, they have to wear a safety vest. They have to wear a hard hat. There's a couple places where we get material that when we go on their property, we have to put on the safety vest and the hard hat. And sometimes safety glasses, depending on where it's at. If it's inside the building, a lot of times you'll have to wear safety glasses. But uh, me, all I actually wear is steel toe boots. And that's just a safety thing because that's like a necessary safety. What if I'm running the cutoff wheel, I'll wear safety glasses. Or if I'm running the torch, I'll wear uh, uh, shaded safety glasses so I don't uh, burn my eyes out. But I never wear a hard hat unless I'm at another company. Do I have any classic cars myself? Nothing nice. All my classic cars are in their raw... <laughs> Junkyard form. Number one goal for my channel? I don't know, just hang out, have fun. I've tried lots of different things in life, done lots of different things. I used to rebuild bicycles, and one day I got tired of it, so I quit doing it. And I don't know, right now I still enjoy doing YouTube, but there may come a day in the future where I don't necessarily enjoy it anymore, and I may quit on it. Or I probably won't just cold turkey quit it but I may fade it out at some point but that's no time soon so don't worry about that I don't really have any huge goals for it my first year I had a YouTube channel my goal was to hit a thousand subscribers that's what my number one goal was and I hit 30,000 and at that point in time I realized that goals are kind of silly so I just keep hanging out and having fun is the gas usable when it comes out of the cars most of the time and if it's bad gas, you can mix it in with good gas, and it'll still burn.
Yeah, I've done a lot of walk arounds, uh, live videos mainly. That's what I was thinking about doing today. And I did a little bit earlier in this video, but <laughs> it's cold and the snow's deep and my foot hurts from where I heard it this morning. And so I lost my ambition, but I think we're about done. Yeah, it's almost dinner time. So I think we're going to head out. Thank you guys for checking in, hanging out with me for a little bit on this cold, snowy day. I enjoy hanging out with you guys. I enjoy all your support. Enjoy all the comments and the likes on the videos and for watching the videos and all that good stuff. And like I say, keep watching, uh, keep checking on the second channel, more adventures made from scratch. I really want to make a push on that channel this year. And so all sorts of good things happen, cool things happening this year, unusual things happening this year. So lots of things are going to be uh, maybe some new content. It's still going to be the same old me recording it, but maybe some, some different stuff that you haven't seen before. Maybe you never even heard of some of the stuff that we're going to be doing if it all works out according to plan. So everybody be safe. Uh, if it's snowing where you're at, definitely don't go out unless you absolutely have to and be safe if you do go out. Uh, make sure you have some mer emergency stuff. I do want to mention that. Some food, water, stuff like that at your house in case you can't get out. All that good stuff. Thank you all. We'll see you all later. Just hanging out, reading the last few comments that are coming in. With that, like I say, also, uh, one more thing before we leave is if you saw anything in this video that you want to buy, we didn't look at that much stuff, or if you do want to buy something in the future that you see in a video, just shoot me an email, buy.amfs at gmail.com, and we'll see if we can work something out on it, and maybe I can send you some more pictures if I still have it, that good stuff there. So with that, I'm going to let you all go. I uh, hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. Remember to get out there, find yourself an adventure. We'll see you on the next one.